Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Your Mark on the World show. Our guest today is Ann Webb. She's the founder of Global Life Vision. She is creating humanitarians, and you don't want to miss this episode. Welcome to Your Mark on the World, bringing you another change maker with champion of social good, Devin D. Thorpe. This episode is made possible via the support of our sponsors, including Johnson & Johnson's Caring Crowd. Anne, welcome to the show. We're thrilled to have you. Thanks, Devin. Happy to be here. Well, I, I'm so excited to, to learn more about what you're doing. I know you, you, you take people on uh, once-in-a-lifetime experiences to Africa, not to do uh, safaris and vacations, not just not that you don't ever do that, but, but the focus of the trip is to create humanitarians and create humanitarian experiences so that people learn how to be and do and share in a better way. So tell us how you do that. Yeah, well, about every quarter, roughly, we go, we head to Africa. So whether that's Kenya or recently, we just opened Ghana, different countries all over. You Rwanda, Uganda, recently. So we just take a group, maybe 10, 15 people, and we are trying to have the experience of first doing humanitarian work, and I typically ask these people, you know, what makes your heart sing? What are you passionate about? Let's make sure that we can include that. We also do training. And then, of course, we need to have some type of cultural experience. So, yeah, safari. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> so uh, tell us an example of uh, a family, a village, a person you've helped in Africa. Okay, yeah, probably really what kicked this off was one of my very first experiences of my dad and I went in together to donate a heifer cow um, to a woman. How do you get the heifer cow on the airplane? I'm not <laughs> I'm a little unclear about that. Yeah. Luckily, we just send the money. So wow. they have them there. They're not that common, though, in Africa. So, you know, there they produce 10 to 15 times the milk that a local cow does. Um, and it's usually some sort of a crossbreed, but you know, some guy told me, oh, it changes lives. And I could not figure out how a cow could change a life, but a cow is a business. So it doesn't just give milk. You get so much extra milk. You can feed your family now. Now you can use the money that you sell the milk to buy eggs, to educate your children. And this particular family had five kids and they and I visited them year after year because I finally went to Africa after I donated this cow and learned that all of their kids had not only been through high school, but the university. They now had chickens. They had a tilapia farm. The husband got in an accident and the, the wife told me, she said, had we not had some of those resources? Sources. They ended up selling their tilapia farm so that they could get medical care. Because not like here, if you don't have the money, they're not going to treat you. So she said, the cow saved our life. It's part of the family. It's a business. <laughs> and I just kind of thought that was pretty cool. So we continue to do that with Global Life Vision. Have you stayed in touch with that family since? Yep. Um, I haven't talked to her for about a year. But yes, um, through Facebook and talking to a mutual friend, I hear, and then they have to give the first two calves to the neighbors who also have to give the first two calves to the neighbors. And so there's an abundance of milk in the area now. Oh, that's great. How, yeah. how, how fascinating. Yeah. How does it change the lives of people to go to Africa and be a part of this? How do you yeah. create yeah. humanitarians? Yeah, let me give you one example that just kind of has hit me because I saw the impact report just today. So I had a woman that I knew and she's like, she called me and, she, and we had an appointment and she's like, hey, I have this really, really crazy idea. I read this book called Kisses from Kate and it was about this girl that went to Uganda and she said, I want to do something like that. And she goes, I have this vision. I, it's called Adopt a Village and I'm going to get a hundred of my neighbors to donate ten dollars a month and we're going to have a thousand dollars and we're, they're all going to commit for a year and in one year's time we're going to do 12 one thousand dollar projects now and she goes but i don't even know how to do that and i'm like 
oh, that's easy. <laughs> and she actually couldn't imagine how that was easy. But I said, you know, I have people on the ground in Uganda, the place where you want to do it, who are life coaches, and I'm trying to help them become humanitarians as well. So we are going to find the village for you and the projects, and they're going to go in every single month and identify the project. We'll get them the money. They'll do it. They'll put it on Facebook. They'll take videos. They'll connect with the kids in the neighborhood. Uh, and so anyway, she ended up getting only like 50 families, but she ended up doing about 800 a month, and we're on our um, 10th month now, and that village has absolutely transformed. From their brick makers, they have sewing projects, goats, pure water, a new school. I mean, and I mean, just because somebody had an idea and just needed someone to guide them through of how to implement that. How has it changed her to become such a successful, impactful humanitarian? Well, I don't see her that often, but she did call me once and, and she did get very emotional. And we've also corresponded at least monthly on this. And she just said, I didn't know that I could take the dreams of my heart and actually make them work. It seemed too hard, too complicated. And, you know, now she's like, what else can we do? So now it's going with something she thought was hard, which turned out to be not that hard to What's next? What else can we do in 2018? Oh, that's great. That's really inspiring. I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, how, did, how do you keep going? Uh, you know, this is, you've been doing this for a while now. How long has it been? Um, I've been doing humanitarian about five years or so. So it doesn't seem like that long to me. Um, but I never, ever, this like wasn't on my plan. This wasn't my, on my list to be a humanitarian. <laughs> um, I really, to be super vulnerable and authentic, about 10 years ago, I was telling one of my friends, I want to be a speaker, I want to be a life coach, and I want to be on a stage, and I want to be well-known, and I want to have ideal life vision go throughout the whole world. And she told me that. Or, I mean, I told her that, and this was like in the first couple of months. And she looked at me, very intuitive, this woman was, and she said, Anne, I saw, I saw it, but it's not going to be the way you think. And I have to admit, I was a little bit depressed, because back then I was like, oh, I want to make money, and I want to change the world, and I want to be on a stage. And all of that, um, I trained for, I coached for five years, and then I started thinking, I know it works in the U.S., but would creating a life vision work for the more impoverished mindset in Africa? And I just wanted to know. And because I'm really connected to a lot of I'm thousands of people, sometimes I can't open Messenger <laughs> on Facebook because of how many message me. Because I see the transformation and the life's change through just changing their mindset, it's not hard to keep going. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. What's the most important lesson you've learned over your tenure as a humanitarian? Yeah. So that tagline of creating humanitarians is actually new. Um, so when I started, I mean, I was very passionate about humanitarian and doing expeditions. But my lesson that I learned, and I learned it the hard way, I'm going to have to admit, is that I thought that everyone that came with me had to do it my way, and this is how we do it, this is all that we do, and that didn't work that well. And I kind of had this aha after about, probably about three years ago, like, these people aren't dumb, they have great ideas <laughs> as well, and maybe I can just help facilitate their dreams and passions in being a humanitarian. And so that was a game changer. And like I said, it was an important lesson to learn that most people, at least everyone I know, they do have a humanitarian heart. They just need to connect it to their own passions and what they want to do to serve. Yeah, well, it's, it, uh, it's a great and powerful lesson for all of us to take to heart. Yeah. You know, a lot of people recognize the need for more humanitarians, more humanitarian work. 
everyone is aware that there are people suffering in this world and, and that we all ought to do something. What you've done is pretty extraordinary. Why did you feel so compelled, so motivated to do so much? Hmm. Well, a couple of reasons. I'm just going to be have to be authentic here. So the first reason was when I saw that a little went a long way in Africa. I was like, $600 changed an entire generation and a family. And so, you know, th that, that was part of it. Um, another reason is, you know, I'm, I'm the founder of Ideal Life Vision, which is a mindset. And in my own life vision, it says um, I act on every impression that I receive. And so because of that, I get a lot of impressions about I should try this, I should do this next. And I've learned that every time I actually do act on that, it turns into something beautiful. Oh, that's great. What is your superpower, Anne? <laughs> I wish it was that I could fly. That would save me <laughs> so much money. <laughs> um, you know, I think that it might be that I'm kind of brave. Um, so I've had, even in the last five or six days, I had a, lot, a couple of people say to me, how do you dare with a pinch nerve running down my sciatic nerve, dare to get on a plane to go to Ghana and that you've never been to, that was my first time about, and I just got home five days ago, go there and do that kind of work with people that you've never even met all by yourself, you know? And it's not the only time I've done that. I've been to Kenya, slept in a Maasai dung hut before, uh, traveled there alone as well. Um, so I think it's that fearless part of me that's like, what's the worst that could happen? I mean, I don't know. Um, so I think that's it because I don't have a lot of fear on failure and traveling and trying weird, crazy ideas, and no doubt some of them haven't worked out. Um, I also don't have a fear of losing my own money, <laughs> so that's good. So I, I would probably say that. Um, I don't know if that's a superpower. I wish it was something like I think it's a very superpower. That's, that's tremendous. Well, and uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today and sharing all you've shared. Before you go, would you take just a minute and tell people how they can learn more about Global Life Vision, how they can connect with you personally, and how they can become a humanitarian? Yeah, great. Um, we'll start with social media. So if you're on, if you get on Facebook, uh, Global Life Vision, um, you can get me there, or Ann Webb. It's actually Ann Nasserian Webb, which is my uh, Maasai name in the middle there, um, or globallifevision.com um, that has our expeditions, our projects, things that we're working on, or shoot me an email, ann.web at gmail.com. That's easy. Fantastic. And thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. We thanks. want to wish you every success in the great work that you're doing. Hey, thanks, Devin. All righty. Let's do some good. A Caring Crowd, we believe everyone has the power to make a difference. Through our crowdfunding platform for community health, we empower passionate people to drive real change. Whether you work for a nonprofit organization, volunteer, or want to get involved for the first time, you can post a campaign on Caring Crowd. Join us, because caring is where change begins. Thank you for listening. This podcast is available at youtube.com forward slash Devonthorpe. Subscribe to this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes by searching for Your Mark on the World. Every weekday, Devon hosts a CEO, celebrity, entrepreneur, or other change maker here on the Your Mark on the World show to inspire and prepare you to make your mark. Devin is a champion of social good, writing about, advocating for, and advising people who are doing good. He is a Forbes contributor who is a recognized thought leader in social entrepreneurship, impact investing, and crowdfunding. 
To book Devin as a speaker, visit devinthorpe.com.